Hello, everyone. I'm honored to be here. And uh, you heard a lot uh, about wearables, and I'm sure many of you probably are wearing wearables now. But I want to introduce to you the invisibles. So before telling you exactly what the invisibles are, so let me start by telling you why I work on this problem on digital health as a computer scientist. Really what I think is really important is to, instead of like taking the patient to, to the clinic or the doctor, is the vision, of course, for the, for the future is to bring the healthcare system to the home. And this is very important because we know that in chronic diseases, problems don't happen overnight. Like in, in congestive heart disease and COPD, things accumulate and then the patient end up in the hospital. So if you can monitor early on, discover changes in health and alert the caregiver, you can avoid some of these exacerbation and hospitalizations. And not only this, we also know that in our clinical trials for drugs, uh, today, you have to bring the patient to the clinic, but if you can push the clinical trial to the home, then you can collect much, much more information, both about the efficacy and the safety of a drug. But you might be thinking, okay, so yeah, the wearables, I mean, I heard about all of these cool technologies, but what do I have now? Can I really do this with current technology? And unfortunately, yeah, if you want to monitor a patient's health today in the home, I mean, things don't look very good. So you can see here, if you want to monitor somebody's breathing, what do you have? You have to put either a nasal probe on them or a chest band. If you want to monitor falls, then you ask somebody to wear a pendant and push a button when they fall. Uh, if uh, we heard about Parkinson's, so if you want to monitor Parkinson's in the home, what you do is just like add these accelerometers on people's limbs and ask them to live like that. And I'm sure some of you guys have been to sleep labs to monitor your sleep. And what they do, they put all of these electrodes, like the woman in the picture here, on your head and your body and ask you to sleep like that. So, I mean, you don't want your patients to live continuously like this. I mean, that's not a good picture. <laughs> but what if someone comes and tells you that we can monitor all of these things for you and many more things without asking the patient to wear any sensor on their body or change their behavior in any way? Just live your life, basically. So this is exactly what I've been doing in my lab at MIT. We developed a new technology. You can think of it much like your Wi-Fi box in the home. But this is a special Wi-Fi box. It sits in the background of the home and uses the wireless signal in the environment to monitor breathing, heartbeats, gait, mobility, falls, sleep, sleep stages, even interaction with the caregiver, all without a single sensor on the body. We call these devices Emerald Wi-Fi. And when I tell people, okay, so actually we can use these devices to monitor things without any wearables, people still ask me, okay, but what do I really have to wear on my body? Like, what sensor do I put? No, there are no sensors on the body, nothing. And the reason why we can do this is, I mean, you agree with me, guys, you all here in Stanford, I'm sure you are swimming in electromagnetic waves in this room. You agree with me, there is Wi-Fi, there is cell cellular signal, everything. And Every single move that you take changes the electromagnetic waves around you. These wireless signals are very sensitive. So if I take a step like this, it changes the electromagnetic waves around me. Took a breath, changes the electromagnetic waves. Even the pulsing of my blood changes the electromagnetic waves. And what we did with this device, we made it smart. We added inside this device uh, machine learning algorithms analyze those electromagnetic waves and can detect, okay, so Dina actually took a step, she took a breath, or this is the pulsing of her blood. So let me show you uh, some, some uh, visualization of how this works and then some experiments from the lab. So here you can see in this video the wireless signal spread inside the home. It actually reflects off our human bodies because our bodies are full of water. And some of that signal comes back to our device which analyzes it. In, in this case, it would detect that it was a fall and can alert the caregiver via text, email, or a phone call. 
Let me show you this experiment from our lab at MIT. So this is my student standing in, in, in his office. And actually, the device is not even in the same room. It's like imagine somebody monitoring us, but from the adjacent office or the adjacent room. So the device is in the adjacent office where you see an arrow. So it's going to monitor him through a wall. This, uh, this red dot here on the side, just to show you where the device he thinks that this person is standing. So as he walks, look at how the device and the red dot tracks him. And you remember, there is no sensor on his body, no cell phone, no accelerometer, nothing. Purely based on how the wireless signal changes because of his movements. So it tracks him pretty accurately. Now, why is this important? Because first, I mean, gait and actually gait speed is very important metric. In fact, when you pass, when you approve a drug for Parkinson's, it's approved based on a test called the six-minute walking test. So it's based on gait speed. And today, if you want to get gait speed, you send your patient to the hospital, uh, to, to the clinic, so that they, they, the clinician can measure them with stopwatch. Here, you get their gait and their gait speed continuously 24-7. But that's not the only thing. Now, if you have a device like this in the home, what else can you monitor? You can start asking questions about eating behavior and toileting behavior, because the device sees a person, it sees how often they go to the kitchen. Are they going there three times per day? Are they standing next to the fridge and next to the, to the, to the oven? Uh, you can ask about toileting behavior. You change the drug if you're a patient, for example, and now they are waking up 20 times to go to the bathroom at night. You can ask about behavior in general, and behavior is very important today, particularly for, uh, for CNS, for, uh, for mental health or new, uh, new, uh, uh, new, uh, <laughs> new degenerative diseases. It's actually very important to have information about behavior, and we did, today we don't have that. So what else can we measure? We can also measure sleep and sleep stages. So perhaps you know that as we go to sleep, our brain waves change, and we enter different stages, awake, light sleep, deep sleep, and REM. And these sleep stages are very important, of course, for sleep and sleep disorders, but they are important for a variety of diseases. Just to give you an example, in depression, for example, REM tends to happen early on in the sleep. So how do you monitor sleep stages today? You send your patient to a sleep lab, they put all of these sensors on their head and body, and they ask them to sleep like this. <laughs> and you agree with me, he's not happy. <laughs> and uh, it's very hard to sleep like this. So let me show you our sensor. So this is our sensor. It transmits very low power wireless signal, monitors the reflections using machine learning, and spits out the sleep stages throughout the night. So it knows, for example, when this person is in REM. And uh, we, we did a study with Mass General Sleep Lab using the device showing that it has very high accuracy. We can also monitor breathing. Like you are sitting like this guy here, and he's sitting and reading, and what you see is his inhales, exhales. We ask him to hold his breath, and you see the signal stays at a steady level because he exhaled, he did not inhale. And we uh, compare that with FDA-approved chest band from Philips, showing that it is very high accuracy, 97% compatibility. OK, so let's zoom in on the signal. So this is the same breathing signals. These are the inhales. These are the exhales. And these blips that you see on the signal, they are actually not noise. They are his heartbeats. And we can get all of this without a single wearable or sensor on the body. Now, of course, once we started talking to doctors, we got many people interested in this, and we started deploying devices in the home of people. We, uh, we deployed in more than 200 homes in various therapeutic areas, including Parkinson's disease, uh, Alzheimer's, depression, and pulmonary diseases such as COPD. So let me show you some of the results with actual patients. So let me start with something simple. So here, what I'm going to show you is the difference between how a patient walks and how a nurse walks. And uh, the green uh, rectangle at the top is our device, and the red dot is the person. So if I play this video. So 
compare the nurse and look at how, how she walks, she's much faster than the patient. But the patient is not just slower than the nurse. Actually, if you look at his movement, it's wiggly. He has balance issues. So I'm going to show you some of the results from a Parkinson's study that we are doing with Michael J. Fox Foundation. So this is another patient. Uh, you can see, again, our emerald Wi-Fi box at the top. And this is a trajectory that is about two hours from this particular patient. And you see that it goes between the bed, the, the, uh, the chair, actually, the, the, there is a kitchen area, and the bathroom. So we took all of these trajectories and we tried to abstract the life of this patient. And let me, let me explain this graph for you. So on this graph, every single circle is one day. Zero is midnight, 12 is noontime. The innermost circle is the first day of this experiment, and the outermost circle is the last day. This is about two months. Now, I want you to look to the blue area, which is the time he's in bed and he's sleeping. And if you look in the middle, next to the innermost circles, you see that the blue is very fragmented, so his sleep was really terrible at the beginning of this study. But then, as time goes on and you go to the outer circle, the blue starts cons uh, consolidating and you see the sleep has improved drastically. The other thing that you see immediately is this green all over the place. So this is when he's sitting on the chair. And this person is very sedentary. You can see it immediately. It's just he wakes up and just sits there. Now, there is a yellow cone around 8 a.m. Yellow is when he goes to the bathroom for his to toileting and dressing. So can you guess why it's 8 a.m.? Like he wakes up about 4 a.m. in the morning when, when the blue ends, but then he waits until about 8 a.m. to go do his showering and toileting. Exactly. This is a person who is very dependent on his caregiver. He's waiting for the nurse who comes at 8 a.m. to take him to do his showering and toileting. So I also showed you breathing of a healthy individual. This is apnea events from somebody who has severe sleep apnea. And as you can see, the person is breathing, inhales, exhales, and then he stops breathing, get an apnea event. Again, breathes, stops breathing, etc. So I want to end by saying that wearables are great. And of course, we should continue and develop them. But really, there is something more that we can do, which is this invisibles. We can have the wireless signals completely without devices on the body be used to monitor passively patients and even healthy individuals. And if we can get, imagine getting all of this information, having a device like that in the home of every chronic disease patient, how much information we will get and how much more understanding of diseases and behavior we would have. Thank you.